Sam Altman has been fired from OpenAI. This news has sent the price of WorldCoin plummeting. Is this the end of WorldCoin? And the SEC has some new requirements around a Bitcoin spot ETF, and Fidelity has filed for their Ethereum spot ETF following BlackRock's lead. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, the big news of the day is that Sam Altman has been fired from OpenAI. This is a move that a lot of people are surprised by and they're saying that possibly it's the end of OpenAI. We'll have to wait and see. We've seen other companies fire founders, uh, such as Apple firing Steve Jobs. That didn't work out well for them. And then Steve came back. So we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, Mira Murati has been appointed the interim CEO uh, of OpenAI. Now, what does this have to do with crypto? Well, so Sam Altman is also the founder of WorldCoin. And that news sent altcoin plummeting. So the price dropped significantly. And of course, I think investors are worried because, you know, part of the idea of WorldCoin is that you had Sam Altman and the OpenAI resources to help build out this project. So losing those resources might be an issue with this project being able to continue. I'm not saying it's dead, but we have to wait and see how things play out. So it's definitely a scenario we have to consider, right, folks? You got to look at all scenarios, bearish, bullish, uh, the, the risk of things not being able to come to fulfillment, or uh, look, things may go in the right direction. Maybe Sam dedicates the majority of his time to WorldCoin now, and he's fully crypto. We'll have to see what happens. And Sam tweeted out the following with regards to uh, the news. He said, I love my time at OpenAI. It was transformative for me personally, and hopefully the world a little bit. Most of all, I love working with such talented people. We'll have more to say about what's next later. So we'll have to wait, folks, and see what happens. Now, today was really a wild day. And Gergavin on Twitter, or X now, uh, summarized a few things of all the big news that took place today. Uh, he said, kind of insane, the amount of stuff that has happened and come out in the last two hours. Open AI CEO and founder Sam Altman was fired. Tesla short seller Jim Canos is shutting down his hedge fund. Apple is stopping all advertising immediately on Twitter, uh, along with Disney. And look, there's a bunch of other companies. I think it's up to eight companies now where folks are kind of worried about a tweet that Elon put out uh, with regards to what's happening in the Middle East. So I'll leave it at that. And of course, uh, Fidelity filed for an Ethereum spot ETF and Citibank will be starting mass layoffs next week. So a big news day all around as it relates to tech and finance and much more. Now, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2018. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. You can buy, sell, and trade Bitcoin and altcoins, and they are fully reserved. They don't lend out your funds. They don't commingle. They do audits so you can verify and trust them and your funds are safe on here. You can also trade precious metals on this platform. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Now, folks, we got big news from the SEC regarding the Bitcoin spot ETF. So uh, here's what Eric Balkanis of Bloomberg had to say regarding this information. He said, hearing chatter, SEC's trading and markets engage with exchanges this week on spot Bitcoin ETF 19B-4s is advising them they'd like the ETFs to do cash creates versus in-kind and has asked them to get in amendments in the next couple of weeks. This isn't unexpected, but good sign nonetheless. Cash creates makes sense in my opinion because broker dealers can't deal in Bitcoin. So doing cash creates puts onus on issuers to transact in Bitcoin and keeps broker dealers from having to use unregistered subsidiaries uh, or third-party firms to deal with the Bitcoin, less limitations for them overall. Only two to three filers had planned cash creates. The rest wanted to do in kind, so may have to adjust or risk delay. Anyway, this doesn't change our 90% odds up or down, but is a good sign the process marching and SEC has a path forward in the plumbing that they are comfortable with. 
He says here, quick clarification here. My point on cash creates was that I could see the SEC's POV for wanting it, but from investors' POV in kind, arguably better in terms of the spread and taxation. So possibly we see some issuers push for in kind, perhaps successfully in engagement with the staff. So folks, um, I think good news, right? The SEC is not banning or or uh, denying. They're saying, hey, put these guardrails in place or let's do it this way. So we have dialogue going, we have back and forth, and this is all the process uh, towards the approval. So certainly bullish news. Now, we also got news that Fidelity, uh, they have filed for their Ethereum spot ETF as well. And uh, this comes as no surprise. Game Theory, expect the other filers to do it as well. Uh, BlackRock, of course, did theirs yesterday. So uh, we are seeing the race heating up, folks. Competition here. They Everybody wants a slice of this pie. And uh, it's going to be a really tasty pie, if you want to put it that way, because we are headed into that big macro crypto bull run, folks. And I think that starts next year, the Bitcoin having in April. Now, with regards to hashtags and their ETH, ETH ETF rule change, the SEC delayed that decision. But this is not you know, anything to do specifically with the spot ETF. This is another thing happening. But just so you guys know uh, what's, what's going on there, specific to hashtags. Now, we got news that crypto lobby spending in the US is set to beat the 2022 record. This is great news. We've talked about it on the podcast before. We live in a world where campaign donations are a, a way to get things done in DC, unfortunately, right? It, this is the system. This is the game that has to be played. And the TradFi incumbents, all those banks and so forth, they give a lot of money, folks, to politicians. So the crypto industry has to lobby. They have to, I, I would say, 3x the numbers that they're putting out right now because we're going up against some heavyweights who have been doing this for a long time, uh, giving campaign donations to get their agenda, to get things passed in their favor. So uh, let me give you some details here. With more than a month left before the end of 2023, the United States crypto industry has already spent $20 million on lobbying efforts. In the last year, the total sum stood at $22.2 million. According to a CoinGecko report published on November 14th, the U.S. crypto lobby has spent $20.19 million in uh, 2023 to date, and this data doesn't include the Q4 numbers. That means the total amount of lobby spending this year will likely exceed last year's numbers, which were an absolute record for the American crypto industry. Between 2019 and 2020, the total lobbying budget of the U.S. crypto companies fluctuated between $2.5 million and $3 million, which accounted for less than 3 percent of the Wall Street company's lobbying expenses. In 2021, this number surged to $8.5 million. In 2022, it reached the $22 million mark. To date, crypto lobby spending has amounted to 19.7% of Wall Street lobbying. So look at that, folks, just 19.7% of Wall Street lobbying. So we are certainly up against the trad five, folks. This is probably why Gary Genser and Elizabeth Warren and, and Brad Sherman and so forth, you know, they, they seem to be uh, really, really going after crypto because they're incentivized to do that. They're probably going to get a ton of money from Wall Street, the folks who want to slow down this crypto industry so they can come in and take over. It's what we've been talking about for a long time. And this is not some far-fetched outlandish idea. It's simply that you know, disruption is at the doorstep of many of these institutions which have controlled the market, made loads of money off the market, and now uh, crypto is taking their lunch. So they don't like that. But the problem is, you know, they're they're buying these uh, agencies like the SEC and so forth, and they have a puppet on the string that is Gary Genser, and he's supposed to be a neutral party, but clearly he's not. Um so we got to we got to get the industry to push and do more lobbying. And look, I, I think this number should have been higher, honestly. But look, I'm not in charge of that. And um, we'll, we'll hopefully next year, there's more uh, money put, being put into lobbying as it's an election year. And uh, we can really sway things and get more crypto friendly people in charge. Um, so very interesting news here. Now, Ripple's Stuart Alderati, he's the chief legal officer, called out Gary Genser today. Uh, Gary Genser putting out his propaganda, tweeting out videos and things that he's been saying. 
Um, and here, uh, Stewart said, fact check Gary Genser's recent remarks. Ripple was sued but never charged with dishonesty. The failed case against it was prejudged, uh, beginning with the ethically compromised Bill Hinman. Genser has prejudged crypto and has filed suit against others without investigation. So clearly calling out Gary Genser for his hypocrisy and lies. And that's why I call the guy a scumbag. He's clearly a liar. He's clearly a hypocrite. And look, don't take my word for it. Listen to the judges in these cases, right? Uh, in the Grayscale case, saying the SEC acted arbitrarily and capriciously. In the Ripple case, the uh, Judge Sarah Nepburn said the SEC lacks faithful allegiance to the law. So it's it's pretty incredible what's happening here that a government agency is acting like this. Finally, I wanted to highlight um, an app that the folks at Galaxy are building, um, and they were recently interviewed by NASDAQ. And it actually, the project involves Spencer Dinwiddie, who's a basketball player. So the founder and Spencer Dinwiddie was, were interviewed, and you know they talked about... Um, their a Galaxy app, which allows you to easily send USDC as you would an instant message or a text or sending a picture and so forth. And they did a live demonstration. And I just thought this is how you ush help usher in the next billion people to crypto and improve adoption. You have to make it easy. You know, people are used to sending uh, texts and email and all these things at lightning fast speeds instantly. And there's no heavy friction. So if you can send money the same way, um, that would be incredible, right? And and you help them to understand that, hey, this is a stable coin. This is a cryptocurrency. This thing is on the blockchain. And on the app, it, the great thing is that you don't have to remember a ridiculously long seed phrase. So uh, really, really great. I'm going to try to get these guys on the podcast um, and... You know, they are using Hedera. Uh, so I'm bullish on HBAR. So I'm going to try to get an interview with them. But I just thought, wow, this this is really awesome. And the easier you can make it for the mainstream folks to adopt crypto, the better. Um, so, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Uh, hit the five-star rating on the podcast platforms. Please sign up for my free newsletter. Link will be in the description. Also, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the social platforms. Links in the description as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.